Okay, the next set of concepts I want to cover are EEP or Extensible Authentication Access Protocol, and then two variations of that, PEEP and LEAP. All right, so EEP or Extensible Authentication Protocol is really a set of authentication frameworks for wireless networks. Now, what you need to understand, again, for the exam, is that there are five different types of extensible authentication protocol that are in existence. Um, basically, two that we need to know for the exam, okay, that are, that are adopted by the WPA and the WPA2 standard. So we have EEP with TLS, we have EEP with pre-shared pre key, and we have uh, EEP with an MD5 hash. Okay, those three have been deprecated. The two that we need to be aware of are LEAP and PEEP. All right, so let's cover that in a little more detail. So LEAP stands for Lightweight Extensible Authentication Protocol. And this one, again, is not really uh, in use, but we need to be aware of what it is. So it's a proprietary protocol developed by Cisco. And as you can see, it's, it was a stopgap basically to, to web insecurities. And it lacked mm -hmm. Windows support. So it really was not uh, in use or, or used by the Windows environments. It was, it was strictly for, for Cisco environments. That in and of itself is really why it, it doesn't have the wide acceptance or it's been deprecated. So it's easy to configure, no digital certificates, which is great, but it's also bad because it's easy to configure and there's no, <laughs> there's no digital certificates, all right? So you have uh, a lot of insecurities there, okay? Clear text transmissions. And as I mentioned, it has since been deprecated. So the one that we need to be really focused on is PEEP, or Protected Extensible Authentication Protocol. And that was jointly developed by Cisco, RSA, which is a, an EMC company, uh, and then Microsoft. So Cisco develops the networking protocols, RSA deals with security, and then Microsoft, of course, with the operating systems. So this joint effort ensured that it is in use or wide adoption throughout the, the IT and the tech community. All right. So it has Windows support, as I mentioned, and it uses digital certificates on the authentication server. So it gives you that extra layer of, of security by authenticating, saying, hey, I'm not going to just connect to any rogue access point, as like we mentioned previously with that evil twin. If we're using PEEP, that would prevent that from happening, all right? Because we have to authenticate to, to what we're connecting to, to the wireless access point and ultimately to the server. So it's going to establish an encrypted channel between the client and the server via a TLS tunnel, all right? So it gives us that extra layer of protection. All right, so some Wi-Fi security best practices. Now, now some of these are common sense. Some of these are not really secure, <laughs> not really security principles, but some people think that they are. So a lot of people will say, well, you should go ahead and you should disable your, your SSID broadcast. All right, your SSID stands for your service set identifier. In essence, it's your Wi-Fi network name. So whether it's your home environment or in a corporate environment, it's whatever you call your wireless network. There are some things that we should just keep in mind. We shouldn't name our networks, you know, something like our business name or address or anything that can really identify the network. Because if you have someone that uh, is sitting, whether it's in the parking lot or if it's an apartment building or anywhere where there's lots of networks around, if you name it something that looks like a high value target, that's going to just allow them to, to kind of key in on you that much faster. So by naming it something generic, something obviously that you can understand what it means internally, but it's not such a, a kind of like a red flag to the outside world. All right, so keep that generic. But having said that, disabling the SSID broadcast really does nothing to increase security. Okay, it's that security by obscurity uh, kind of principle, and it really doesn't do anything. Because as I mentioned, with any type of even low-end hacking or pen testing tool, we can capture that, that SSID even if it's not being broadcast. So that one, understand what it, what it is by disabling it so we're not broadcasting it to the outside world. Um, you know, average person on the street who opens up their laptop and is looking for Wi-Fi networks to connect to, sure, they wouldn't see it. But anyone who's actually trying to get access to your network, they can easily find out what that is. Okay, so MAC filtering would be the next one. As we know, media access control, or the MAC address, is that hardware address that's, that's burned in to our network interface cards, or our NICs. Now, that holds true for the most part. However, uh, MAC addresses can be spoofed. There, are, there is hacking tools, again, that are available to pretty much anybody that wants them that will allow you to spoof a MAC address so you can make it make it appear as though it's any MAC address you want. And then also in a virtualized environment, uh, MAC addresses, they need to be basically changed on the fly because depending upon the infrastructure that you have, your, your profile kind of follows with your virtual machine. So you can migrate a machine from one uh, piece of infrastructure to another and that MAC address will follow. 
So Common Sense Administration always change the default admin password. When you set up your Wi-Fi, do not leave it the same. Do not leave it the default SSID and then do not use the default username and password. That's basically guaranteeing that someone's going to hack into your to your Wi-Fi. Use the strongest encryption and authentication available. All right, there are some instances, as I said, where you may have to use some older authentication. You may have a device on your network that can only use WEP, so you may need to have that. If that's in fact the case, and if you can segment that and perhaps give them their own uh, separate small Wi-Fi that can connect using only WEP, then that's better than, than having it throughout your entire network. It really just depends upon uh, how you have your individual you know, network set up. And then also keep all of your access points up to date with patches and firmware. Okay, that same, the same methodology that we use for servers and anything that has any type of quote unquote attack surface, we need to make sure that it's patched and, and the firmware is up to date. Because as vulnerabilities uh, are discovered, obviously it gets pushed out to the IT community. It very quickly finds its way onto the hacker boards and so forth, a lot of times before even the IT community gets a hold of them. So if you don't have your, your anything kind of perimeter or edge facing or public facing, patched and updated, you can pretty much rest assured at some point someone's going to try to pen test those devices or uh, those uh, pieces of infrastructure. And if there are vulnerabilities that do exist, then you're leaving yourself wide open.